Ultimaker upgrade, heated bed. <laughs> ah, yeah. The first thing I ended up getting was an aluminum plate. Now I found this beauty on eBay. I went ahead and measured and drilled the holes in the plate to mount to the pre-existing location. And I countersunk them so the heads would fit below the glass. Four holes to mount the heated bed and then four holes to level the platform. I ran into a lot of snags in this project and the first one was that the heated bed had a bump on the surface that I wanted to mount the aluminum plate so I had to mill out a special slot so that it wouldn't interfere. And because I didn't think ahead far enough to realize that I needed to tap the aluminum plate, I needed a way to hold the bolts into the plate without spinning, so I made these little doodads. They essentially act like lock nuts and don't allow the bolts to spin. Now I had to mount the thermistor into the aluminum plate to get a good reading. I drilled a hole about halfway into the aluminum plate and then poked the wires of the thermistor out through the heated bed. Now here I go ahead and mount the heater PCB to the aluminum plate and put my bolts in. And yes, at this point I decided to convert to 3 post leveling. This is the original LED circuit but I ended up repositioning it later on. I connected the thermistor to the Ultimaker controller and the heater PCB to the relay. Whew, that was a lot of soldering. Okay, now to disassemble the stock build platform. I drilled this hole to allow me to use the three point bed leveling system. The M3 bolts that hold the bed up now go through a printed collar with a thumb screw to hold everything tight. Now we install the heated bed onto the platform. Okay, let's do a little comparo at this point, shall we? The stock setup has an acrylic bed with a bolt that runs down to a Delrin block. To level the bed, you have to adjust the bolts from above. Now it's my turn. All right, my system incorporates a bolt that goes from the aluminum plate down through the platform and has a thumb screw in the bottom. To adjust it, all you have to do is reach below the bed and adjust the thumb screw. Easy peasy. At this point, I could go no further until I had three Chick-fil-A sandwiches, yeah! All right, then I got right back to work. This is a transistor circuit that I designed to allow me to switch my relay on and off using a PWM signal. Most people just use standard car relays. Now those suckers make a big click noise every time they cycle. And using PWM, that cycles a lot. Well, I decided that I didn't want to do that, so I got a solid state relay that's as quiet as a mouse. Because the transistor circuit that I designed couldn't handle the 19 volts that the Ultimaker puts out from the control board, I had to go ahead and hunt around to find where I could get the PWM signal. To get the right signal, I went ahead and soldered to the back of the LED that turns on from the power MOSFET for the heated bed. Ultimaker made me work to get to behind this thing. First, you had to loosen the control board, then peel the Arduino off, that was a pain in the butt, and then you could get to the back of the LED where I soldered on my wire. Okay, those LED wires ran to my transistor to basically turn my big relay on and off. And because I'm a glutton for that solder smoke, I decided to take those LEDs off the heated bed and put them behind the Ultimaker logo. All right, after all that was done, I did a quick firmware update and then I tested this bad boy out. Let's crank it up to 10 or well, like 105 really. So you can see the ambient temperature is 22 while the bed is set at 105. The blue LEDs are on which means the bed is getting power and it's heating up. Alright, you can see the bed's already gotten to 24 degrees. Now let's go ahead and turn the bed off to see if the LEDs turn off and everything's working correctly. The bed temperature kept rising to about 27 but you can see it's been set at zero now and the LEDs are off. Cool, everything works. To test the new setup, I went ahead and sliced the nethery stress test, and as you see here, it did pretty good. I breezed through this process, it actually was pretty difficult. I know you probably have questions. If so, please feel free to ask down in the comments below. I ran into problems where I needed to mill on the aluminum plate. I ran into problems with designing the circuit to turn the relay on and off. Um, lots of little things that I kind of breezed over. But everything that I bought, everything that I ended up doing, you can find links down below. Also, the models that I made, you can also find on my Thingiverse account down below. If you like these videos, if you like what I'm doing, please support me by clicking the like button, subscribing to my channel, commenting down below. All that stuff helps encourage me to make better content for you guys. I've got a couple cool projects coming up. I don't want to spoil them just yet, but stay tuned for some updates on my channel. Meow.